Joining us now in studio is WRTV's Vic Riker. Vic, you are a longtime journalist here in the Indianapolis area. So you have a lot of insight on this particular case regarding Amaya. So looking at what the prosecutor just announced, what are your thoughts on specifically using a grand jury in this situation? Yes, yeah, so this, uh, grand juries aren't used in a lot of cases, but mm -hmm. usually it's when a case is really complicated. And, or the evidence is sort of conflicting or, or and and the prosecutor today at his press conference said this was a very complicated case with a lot of evidence and so they use the grand jury to sort of present what they can sift through it and then ask the grand jury whether or not there's enough charges to file in this case they found enough to file um, felony neglect of a dependent causing serious bodily injury and I think the point that this is a serious bodily injury case is important because it tells us that there's evidence that has not been released yet, that the public doesn't know. Evidence, and it could be anything, it could be blood, it could be a, a statement from a witness, it could be a statement from one of the parties that they've indicted. Sure. Um, something that we don't know about yet um, leads them to believe that baby Amaya was suffered some kind of series of bodily injury mm -hmm. that the indictment had. Well, and that could lead to as much as 16 years behind bars with that charge, right? That is. And, and in a case like this, I think the hope from prosecutors is they will get close to 16 years because, yeah. you know, the, the evidence is that you have an eight month old baby who disappeared. Still not found. It's still not found. Still no body. So, so police and prosecutors mm -hmm. are convinced, you know, um, baby Amaya is dead um, because an eight-month-old like um, I think it was a police chief today in this press conference said you know that this child didn't get up and walk away mm -mm. so so they know something horrible happened and um, and they believe they believe that she is gone mm -hmm. and uh, it, yeah so that's that's what we have so they're gonna hopefully use that to persuade a judge to say this is a case that deserves a maximum and what's interesting too, you mentioned, are the specific things that were no build. Yes. So the prosecutor today said, look, there are two crimes that were no build. And when a grand jury, so when they present evidence to a grand jury, um, you know, they go for a range of crimes. Now we can, we don't know this, but we can assume that they asked for murder in this case. And that was one of the no bills. And we can assume that the other one was something more serious than the neglect causing seriously bodily injury, possibly neglect causing death, right? And, and that was also no bill. So you, I think we can assume through those no bills, and, and again, this is experience talking, not, you know, not any sort of <laughs> sources or anything right. that said that. But we can kind of assume, if you watch courts, that the jury was asked to find the jury evidence was to the jury the evidence was not enough yeah. to suggest that they could prove the baby was dead yeah however the evidence is clearly enough to a jury's mind that there is seriously bodily injury we're talking about years and years of expertise in yes right I've, yeah, of course i've been covering this for a couple decades um, exactly a lot of time in court in, in marion county and in indianapolis indiana and so you were personally out there early on in this story right you were one of the people who's been covering this from the beginning so you know, relay it back or rewind to the beginning when you're out there and how this has developed for you. Yeah, so, I mean, this was a huge story when this happened. Um, you know, missing baby, mystery, we have no idea where the child is. Yeah. Um, there was this amber alert, or no, I'm sorry, there was a silver alert mm -hmm. um, that came out some days after. I, and, you know, the way it unfolded, it was just such a mystery that captured the attention of the city. and. In the community. <laughs> yes, the com <laughs> yes, and and I mean even today it never really gave up. There are there are Facebook groups and people you know go out and they march every year, um, hold some sort of remembrance for Amaya. So the pressure's never really lifted since this happened on this case. And and you know I again I was out there. I I remember when they were they had equipment out there and cadaver dogs at the at the house where the babysitter lived, the house on Holmes Avenue. And, you know, that was, it was a, it was a crazy time here. And they were also, they, they brought divers out to bodies of water. Um, there was a pond at a, an apartment complex they were searching. And there was a, the White River mm -hmm. that they went to to search and all hoping to find baby Amaya's body 
and they never have. Mm -hmm. and, and the community response, why do you think so many in the community still feel so passionate about this story? You Yourself know, included? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, this is a little girl who, who could not get up and walk away. This is a child, a baby. And I think that, that the fact that... The innocence. Yeah, yeah, the innocence. And the in fact a, that... A young child. The fact that, you know, nobody seemed to be giving answers that made any sense to people. Right, mm -hmm. the 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 mother and the father. Well, the mother and the boyfriend. The the statements the police said, uh, the police released on this, just weren't making sense. And you know, the I think, it, police were frustrated by this case for a long time because they knew that what they were being told wasn't necessarily accurate, and they mm -hmm. were so sort of angry about it or so concerned about it early on that they held a press conference on this case. A very rare kind of press conference we almost never see, which was, you know, as the investigation was sort of unfolding, they came out and they said, the boyfriend, they named him and called him a suspect, and they released evidence in this talking about how he had given, you know, locations that didn't exist as to where the baby might be. Hmm. And and so it was it was clear. And then, you know, they, they weren't as hard on Amber, the mom, but it was kind of clear that they had concerns about her. Amber knew the baby was missing on the 9th, but no one reported it until a week later. A full or week. Days. Yeah. Yep. So it was, it was, there was a long stretch of time where she didn't have the baby and didn't tell anybody she didn't have the baby. So, so these were all things that, that were really frustrating to police. And sure. They, they had a big press conference. And basically everything we know officially about this case came out of that press conference that was held in March of 2019. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, we will see how this unfolds. And they spoke to a bit of the frustration with getting false leads. So hopefully this most recent press conference will lead to viable, truthful leads for the police department. Yeah, we can hope. And we can hope that, you know, <laughs> that they find uh, Robert Lyons and get him behind bars and, and charge with this like they want to. And that, you know, I don't know what justice is going to look like for baby Amaya, but I hope she finds it. Hope so. Vic, thank you so much for your reporting and talking with us today.